Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I finally got the um, Blue Circuit production up and running properly. Here we go over here, there's um, yeah, a couple of things making the uh, the red circuits. I did just manage to squeeze this in here without having to move the other two belts across, so so that was nice. It's um, fitted in reasonably well. Um, I say now everything's working, we've run out of plastic, um, which just seems to be a bit of a running theme all over the base, so I'm going to need to work on um, boosting the production of plastic a bit. Um, copper is, yeah, copper is okay at the moment, so yeah, that means up here we've got all of these um, blue circuit machines pretty much running as they should be. Why is that one stopped? Maybe there's not, well, the green circuits aren't quite coming through fast enough perhaps? It's about right anyway, so these these machines are mostly working. We've got that gentle trickle of blue circuits coming out, and we've got up to 12,000 of them in here, and that's after I sent a train over to grab as much as it could, which turned out to be about eight or 9,000, I think, and dumped them in the base over here. So we've got... Oh, we're starting to run out a bit, actually. But in theory, we've got a good supply of blue circuits. Uh, how many's left in each of these? This, hmm... There's quite a lot left in those, like 800, 800 900, about maybe almost a thousand in those, which is a bit odd given that these are supposed to have been unloading in sort of perfect synchronicity. Um, this is this balancer here is supposed to make sure that the output is balanced between them all. So that's a bit of a concern, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. But as I was saying in the last episode, that belt is bringing them all the way across here, all the way up here, to where I've got. All the, way, all the way up here to where I've got some research now. I've, I've built all this up, building the uh, the yellow science and also the purple science. So I have been busy. <laughs> uh, there's quite a lot going on here. So there's the um, the low density structures being built up here. That's um, what all, all these machines are doing now. They're a bit limited by the supply of. Are they limited? No, those are those are okay. They've got all. I think they've got all the inputs they need. Um, oh no, 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 they're limited by plastic, so this is another place where plastic is required and we've run out of it. Uh, there's quite a backlog of the, um, the low density structures though, so we'll be able to carry on building up the, um, that for a while, except that... Is this another thing that's bung... no. Um, these have stopped as well, is that another plastic shortage? Basically, the problem I've run into is I'm getting very, very short of a lot of the resources. So, oh yeah, iron is very, very short, I, I don't have enough, anything remotely enough of that. Bricks appear to be mm, maybe almost stable. That seems to be no. That's definitely shrinking. I need more bricks as well. Um, steel is probably about okay. So yeah, the, the, I'm I've got I've got yellow science being produced here at a in theory at a reasonable rate. I've got purple science being produced here in theory at the same rate. But because I don't have enough iron, I don't have and, and bricks are a bit of a problem. Plastic is a massive problem. It's not being produced anything like as quickly as it should be. Um, is there anything interesting to say about these? I, this is just a massive bank of um, electric motor producing machines because you get through a lot of them making the uh, the flying robot frames we need for this uh, for this system. So these are all, and it takes roughly the same amount of time to make the two types of engine. This one's a what ten seconds to make one, and where's the electric one? There it is. Ten, ten seconds to make that one. So yeah, so I'm doing direct insertion from one to the other. Um, the normal engines require motors, the electric engines require electric motors, which is what these are being brought along along here, along this belt, from a system down here that's making all of them. Um, and then I've got cogs being made and, and pipes being made here for these engines. So there's nothing particularly complicated going on here. Um, I've got this, these, these twiddly bits here to sort of to make sure the pipes go on one side and the cogs go on the other. That, that works as you'd expect. Um, pipe bringing in the lube for the electric engines. Oh, works interesting. These aren't all, are all going to not be working. I didn't copy enough of that across. Let's fix that up, or at least, goodness sake, get the bots to fix it up for me, because uh, that's what they're there for. Um, we'll put that there. <laughs> that can't go there. So that's, that's fairly straightforward. Up here, again, reasonably straightforward. I've got the um, so you need electric furnaces for the purple science. So we've got the normal stone furnaces being built here, pass, uh, passing along this belt into the steel furnaces, which take about a bit longer to make, and then along to the electric furnaces, which take even longer to make. Um, th are those numbers about right? I think they were. Uh, let's see, furnaces. No, they'll be in here. So half a second to make one of those. Three seconds to make one of those. 
five seconds to make one of those. So that it, yeah, I don't, I don't actually need a whole one uh, machine making these furnaces, but you can't make, you can't split these up. So it's as close as I can get. And that was about right. I brought up these heat shield tiles from way down here somewhere. Yeah. So I was making them in fairly large quantities for this for the, this electric furnace machine down here, uh, which is feeding for the, to the, uh, the logistics network. But it looks like these aren't actually being made as quickly as I'd like. I think that might be again due to the shortage of bricks. So this is a very very brick heavy um, uh, research pack. I'm going to need to, so I'm going to need to have a lot more bricks being pumped in here. Um, the question is, do I want to start bringing them in by um, by train or do I want to carry on making them on site? Because I've got in here, this shouldn't be called blue drop, this should be called stone drop. And that means I suppose it should probably be a sort of a yellowish colour like that. Slightly dirty yellow, there we go, to match the stone. So that's being pumped down here. We've got all these machines making glass, which is required for something. I think one of the research packs required that. And then down here, we've got all these machines that are taking the, the stone that's coming through here. Some more glass being made down here. So I, put, I built this first and then discovered it wasn't making remotely enough. So I expanded up here a bit. Um, and then down here, we've got a flow of bricks and a flow of stone coming out. And it's not enough of either of them, to be honest. I'm going to need to... I might need to start bringing in trains worth of uh, stone. Or maybe the, the, or the alternative is to start putting the all the research pack construction out somewhere externally on the on the um, in having having little factories for each of those perhaps along here um, like I did with the Angel Bob's run what are you complaining about missing cargo okay so there's just not enough um, of the resources around for what the project's expecting uh, that's better than the alternative so yeah I can expand out into this area I have now finally researched artillery so I can start making that that's my definitely my next thing to do and then just drive around the edge of the base blowing everything up and clearing it all out uh, so that'll hopefully <laughs> yeah that, that'll, that, that's a big thing I need to do oh the other thing I did which I'm quite which I'm uh, rather happy with in fact I'm just going to nip down to show you this with the um, actual player character because just talking about it isn't quite as good now where's my car did I leave my car anywhere along here or am I gonna have to run the whole way turns out run the whole way never mind it wasn't too far so what I've done here, each of these um, two ca two wagons holds loads of stuff that I tend to use when I'm building up outposts or just or just generally building in in general. Um, and so each of the, all these things, the reason they've got blue backgrounds here is because the specific items are locked to that square of of the um, of the wagon. So those are the only things that can go into those particular squares. So that means when the train pulls up here. These inserters will pull from these requester chests, which are all requesting whatever it is that their particular item is. And then the ins these green inserters will dump the stuff into the train and fill it up with all of the bits it's supposed to be carrying. The reason I've got one chest for each individual thing, rather than having, having multiple logistics requests in here like that, is because there's a bit of a tendency with these inserters, especially the stack inserters, if there's room for, say, four pieces of belt in here, and the stack inserter will still pick up 10 or whatever it's currently able to pick up, um, which is currently five, due to my level of research. And it will try and put all of those in there. And that's why, if you look at this one, it's still holding a piece of belt that it's not able to put in there. And if it does that, if it gets stuck in this position, it then won't pick up a different thing from in the chest to put into the train. So there are a couple of possibilities. One is to limit the stack inserter's um, the stack size to one, in which case it'll move one one item at a time, and then it will always make sure that, and it will always, then it will always only take something that has room to put into the into the recipient. Uh, whatever it's putting into um, but that means they run a lot slower a fifth of the speed or a tenth of the speed um, or you can do what I've done here and have one chest for each individual thing so we've got both types of pipes we've got both types of signals we've got rail uh, LTN stations and so on and then down here we've got various inserters and and miners and we've got miners yes we've got miners there so the idea is this this now holds all the things that are required for an LT for a uh, file train to just fly towards the horizon and also it holds all of the things that are required for me to build a mine or an oil oil mine when I get there. I've also got the um, the four wagons at the back are for jump, dumping rubbish into, whether it's things like um, ore, any ore that I get, or stone or tr wood or rocks that I end up end up carrying, it can all just be dumped straight into here, like that. and then they'll get unloaded somewhere later when, whenever necessary. Now what I've also done is I've put in these 
these three requester chests, and these are supposed to be pulling any miscellaneous rubbish out of my um, out of my logistics network. Because I've been dumping for ages, I've been dumping all of the junk that the train picks up into these chests here. So there's a huge amount of stuff in these. Like there's some random metals, there's some wood, some stone, some coal, so on. Some inserters in this one. Um, and so, and all, even some uranium. So all the sort of the junk that I just ended up with in my pockets, and I don't really want to have to deal with at the time, I can chuck it out into these into these chests or into into the train, which will then pull up, used to pull up next to these chests, and will unload into those. And now, because they're all um, provider chests, the logistics bots are very very gradually, because there's enormous amounts of stuff here, they're gradually moving it around. So the all iron ore is going into this chest, copper ore into this one. Um, Things like stone and actual iron and copper plates are being taken all the way down here and put into these chests. And so it's just tidying all of the junk up that I've been picking up and just dumping in chests because I didn't have anything better to do with it. Once they're done with that, then I'll start working on some of the slightly more complicated things uh, that aren't a little bit less obvious to where they're supposed to go, like like ammunition and tank shells and, uh, and uranium and, and iron chests and that sort of thing. And eventually, and it's, it's not something I'm in any great hurry about, eventually I'll get all of that tidied up and back where it should be. So, there are a few problems at the moment, things I'm going to need to look at for the um, in the next few episodes. One is that there's still biters absolutely bloody everywhere, so I'm going to need to build an artillery train, maybe with three or four artillery cannons on it, and somewhere for loading all of those up, and just go out and clear all of them out, because it's it, it's, too much, it's too much of a pain. And they keep attacking they keep attacking my stuff as well, so all of my outposts have got have got the um, repair packs and the spare turrets and things in, as I've, um, as I've mentioned before. So this one seems to be running out of repair pack. Oh no, there's 18 of them there. Um, on, there's 18 of them in the logistics network. There they are, 18 of them. Um, so it's... 19. So they are capable of, of protecting themselves, but every so often I'll get an alert that a turret's been destroyed, so I'll, then I'll go out and slap some more turrets down around it, and the bots will go out and put, place them for me. But it's still it's a bit of a pain having to do that, and it gets through quite a lot of resources. And ammunition... Ammunition individually, not so expensive, but when you're getting through massive, massive quantities of it... Uh, like this, this, this assembly machine here has made 23, almost 24,000 um, armor uh, piercing ammunition magazines. This one's apparently not made any. I wonder why not. I must, I must have messed up the. Oh, there's no inserter for putting into it, for goodness sake. Um, this one's made 21,000. This one's made 20,000. This one is another screw up. This one's made 4,000. So we're getting into the lower, 18,000, 17,000. So. There's probably a couple of hundred thousand. Um, in fact, I can check. Let's have a look here. Um, in all time, I've made 174,000 armor-piercing ammunition magazines. Now, a lot of them... I've only, I've only used 60,000 of them up, actually, so all the rest are just sat out in chests or in gun turrets or on belts or something like that, which is a bit... Uh, well, that shows how wasteful having things out on um, on the belts is. Um, but you know, it's kind of kind of necessary, I suppose. Um, maybe. I think there's also about eight thousand in each of my stations as well, which is a bit um, probably a bit excessive. But anyway, I've made one hundred and seventy-five thousand um, piercing uh, magazines. That's quite a lot. Um, and so it'd be nice to sort of cut down on. And I've used sixty thousand of them, so it'd be quite nice to cut down on that uh, that usage a bit. Uh, so yeah, blow up everything out there. The next big thing is resources, just resources in general. Uh, if we look, take a look here, whatever this is, empty. I think this is probably plastic. We have no plastic, nowhere, hardly any plastic at all. Copper is well. This is actually okay. It's not. It's not going through at full speed. Iron, again, is a problem. Um, that's. Actually seems to slow down a bit, maybe because of the plastic shortage. Oh no, it's because we've got it just going down onto one belt here. So iron and potentially copper, I don't think I'm actually short of. It's just I don't have the logistics to get it from here where it's being unloaded into the base all the way up here where we're trying to turn it into research packs. Which is part of the reason I'm now that I've built this and got it working to an extent and have some science trickling through it's quite tempting to just take a copy of this and shove it off somewhere else with with a load of stations feeding it and we'd need um, steel stone iron two types of circuits bricks maybe I could make the bricks probably make, probably make the bricks from the stone um, on site so there's this this but there's quite a lot of stuff needed for these uh, this one's gonna be even more ridiculous I imagine uh, we've got steel oh no sorry something else we've got 
uh, steel, plastic, copper, glass, uh, iron, more copper, green green circuits, steel again, batteries, blue circuits. So there's a, just a huge number of different resources going into all of these. So there's going to be a lot of unloading stations if I want to try and take this off somewhere else. So which is, I mean, this, the point of the bus is that you have all of your things in one place. So what I can do to improve this. The first and the most obvious thing is just increase the amount of bandwidth between between down here and up there. Now there are two ways to do that. I can either lay more belts as I've been doing here. So this this one was specially for the ammunition when I was getting through loads of it. So that's not so much in use anymore. Uh, this one was for the top half of the bus. This one was for the bottom half of the bus. I could put in another belt or I could upgrade these to red belts, uh, which is easier on the space because it doesn't take up any extra space at all. You just slap an upgrade planner over the whole thing. But it does mean you um, you have to spend enormous quantities of iron to make to, to get the, the more iron up there because red belts are quite expensive. That said, I'm leaning towards that as being the simpler solution at this point. Um, and because I do have a suitable iron, no, red red circuit, no, red belt production facility going on here, and I've got 400, that's probably not going to reach all the way. Um, but it's being built, so it is a, it is, it is a thing that can be done. Um, the other possibility is to, as I say, to run another belt along here, or to have more station, another set of stations, perhaps in this gap here, where I'm unloading iron and copper again, all over again, and then punching them through onto the bus up here somewhere. That's that would be quite that would be quite a neat way of doing it actually, because it would mean I could get more of the things I'm using a lot of in up here, um, the the iron and the copper particularly, without having to run without having to take all of the things like the blue circuits and the glass and so on off somewhere else by train. So that's quite tempting just to do, have some top-up trains in up here. Hmm, I have to think about that. Um, the other... The, let's see, the other thing uh, that is a major problem is the speed I'm producing plastic at. This, 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 this is terrible. Um, it appears that I've run out of oil again, so there's. Um, I'm going to need to find. I'm going to need to open up another oil mine, and I think that's something that's going to rely on the um, the artillery to, to free up some space for it as well. Um, that said, I do have an oil train coming in. The other thing is, even when there is enough oil in the system, which is, I mean, there's there's, there's, there's some, but it's just not getting pumped out properly. Um, even when there is oil in the system, this isn't enough machines making plastic. I need I need a lot more than this. Um, the debate now is whether I try and increase this, I double the production and squeeze it in here somewhere, or whether I go, well, this is okay, but not enough, and slap in another massive oil refinery somewhere over here that can just be extended upwards forever, and made bigger and bigger as, as, as demand increases. I think that should be, um, I think the latter of those is probably better, let's take it off somewhere else. So the other other problem, <laughs> there's quite a lot of these, there's lots, there's lots for me to do. <laughs> um, it occurred to me over here we've got what nine belts of copper ore going in so ideally we've got nine belts of, of copper plate coming out and yeah, well all of these machines are running my numbers don't seem to be quite right because these belts aren't quite full I, th I should probably come along and fill in all these gaps down here but at least all these machines are running now they don't have random bits of um oh no oh nice um <sighs> at least at least the asteroids sorry meteorite strikes are Whilst they're annoying because they blow a load of stuff up and break things. Um, now, I, if they happen somewhere like this, I've got so many bots around, so many repair packs and things that I, I, I'm not, I'm not even going to touch that myself. I'm just going to let the bots come in and, and tidy it all up. It's, it's kind of what they're there for. It's quite nice actually. You get these um, huge fleets of bots swooping in with their repair packs and just um, fixing everything up. He says gradually waiting for it. I mean that what that wasn't a particularly huge fleet, but uh, but yeah, you get the bots. The bots come in, they fix it all up. So if I, I'll come back and have a look at that in a couple of minutes, and it'll probably all be okay again. So over here, <laughs> there are there are several problems here. One is as I was touching on just now, these belts aren't full coming out. So we, we aren't producing nine full belts of copper. I can't. I apparently can't do maths. So I think what we need to do is take a copy of this and put it here like so there's a problem there, oh there's, there's a radar in the middle of it uh, I might, no I should probably get rid of that um, of course as soon as I do I'll go blind um, in this area at least there we go uh, let's put radar in 
there. That looks like a good place for it. Right, so, as I was saying, these are, it's not full coming out of here. So what I'm going to do with this, in theory at least, is knock, increase the amount of, amount of copper that's flowing through by about 50%. So I should be able to use up the entire, a further 50% after I doubled it before, because I still can't do numbers or apparently thinking. Um, so, yeah. Um, first problem is this isn't fast enough, so I can, I can, I can help, help with that by putting in a load more of these um, smelting machines. Second problem, there's not enough copper coming in. So down here we've got, that says minus 40k, so it should be put, calling for trains quite frequently. Um, but it's not frequent enough. That there isn't, as you saw, we ran out of copper ore. Alternatively, it could be because there isn't enough copper ore in the copper mines. Uh, there's a train filling up here. Yeah, there's not, this This is nearly empty as you can see. That's not, it's not that nearly empty, but there's not as much here as I would like. Where was my other copper? My other copper mines down here. Again, there's not as much here as I would like. It's only 17,000. That's not enough for a train. So I need I need more copper mines, which means I need to find more copper patches because I seem to have used them all up. <laughs> or at least all the decent-sized ones. I need to go off exploring over this way some more. Um, so that's the thing. Then the other problem is, yeah, there's nine belts going across here. If I get the, all of these full, that's nine belts of copper coming out. Nine belts of copper isn't that much. These facilities up here when these are running flat out if all three of my um my circuit production facilities are running absolutely flat out then in theory i'm getting through 18 belts yellow belts of copper um in those constantly now this one stopped because it's run out of plastic this one's this one's running flat out i guess yeah you can see the you can see the rate the copper's coming through here these are going almost flat out green circuits i suspect maybe i've just got enough now Oh, no, green circuits just don't have any copper. So I'm trying to use 18 belts of copper in those three so three factories, factories, plus another two here. That's 20, and I'm producing nine. So maybe I need to build another one of these smelteries for copper, because there just isn't enough of it. Iron over here, that's full. That's fine. Stone bricks, again, basically full. That's fine. Steel, full. So it is just copper. So perhaps the answer is just take a copy of this bit, once I've got some more space I can play with, and have another copper smelting station a system somewhere, uh, just an I identical to this one. And then have, as I said, some more copper mines because I'm very short of it. Oh, there's some up here. Two million there. One million there. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go and proclaim these two. Um, no, that's, that's less than a million. Barely worth it. So yeah, I need, need more oil. I need more copper. I need more copper processing. I need more oil processing, and at that point, there. Oh, and I need more more stone stone and stone bricks down here. So I might need more stone mines. Who knows? <sighs> at that point, once all of that's done, then uh, then hopefully all of my systems here will be running at a decent speed. I'll have the research pouring out instead of dribbling out, and uh, I'll be able to get on with things. Actually, the yellow's not doing too badly. We've got it's backed up up to here, so there's quite a lot of that. The purple is backed up to here because I'm not doing any research. So we're not doing too badly. Let's have a think. What do we want to research next? Area mining drill. Mm, don't care. Beacons might be nice. Oh, effectivity beacon. Yes. If oh, no, wait. Uh, interesting. Nuclear, nuclear. That's something I wanted. Yes, I'm, I'm short of power absolutely everywhere. Let's have nuclear and mining productivity, and oh, let's get blue belts. I'm kind of going to want them soon, and inserter capacity. Coal liquefaction. That'd be useful because then I can stop using, um, then I can stop using quite so much uh, oil. And let's have uranium ammo because that's always fun, and power armor mark too. Okay, that's filled up my research queue. Wow, this has been a long episode. I've rambled quite a lot, clearly, um, but I had quite a lot to talk about. So hopefully, it's been um, it's been worthwhile and interesting. So as I say, I think it's been quite good. Built up some more research, but I'm now very short of supplies. I'll go out and get some more of them, and I hope you'll come and join me next time, where hopefully I'll have blown up absolutely everything on the map and harvested all of the resources. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>